what do you think is rarest in the universe? You said we might be alone. What's hardest to build is another engineering way to ask that. Life, intelligence, or consciousness? So like you said that we might be alone, which is the thing that's hardest to get to? Is it just the origin of life? Is it the origin of intelligence? Is it the origin of consciousness? So um, let me at first explain you my kind of mental model, what I think is needed for life to appear. Mm -hmm. um, so I imagine that at some point there was this primordial uh, soup of uh, amino acids and maybe some proteins in the ocean. And, uh, you know, some proteins were turning into some other proteins through reaction. And uh, you can almost think about this uh, cycle of what uh, turns into what, as there is a graph essentially describing which substance turns into some other substance. And essentially life means that all of a sudden in the graph has been created a cycle such that the same thing keeps on happening over and over again. That's what is needed for life to happen. And in some sense, you can think almost that you have this gigantic graph and it needs like a sufficient number of edges for the cycle to appear. Mm -hmm. um, then um, from perspective of intelligence and consciousness, uh, my current intuition is that they might be quite intertwined. First of all, it might not be that it's like a binary thing that you have intelligence or consciousness. It, it seems to be uh, 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 more a, a co continuous uh, component. Let's see, if we look, for instance, on the even networks uh, recognizing images, uh, people are able to show that the activations of the, these networks correlate uh, very strongly uh, with activations in visual cortex uh, mm -hmm. of some monkeys. The same seems to be true about language models. Um, also, if you, for instance, um, look, um, if you train agent in a 3D world, um, at first, you know, it, 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 it barely recognizes what is going on. Over the time, it kind of recognizes foreground from background. Over the time, it kind of knows where there is a foot uh, and it just follows it. Um, over the time, it actually starts having a 3D perception. So it is possible, for instance, to look inside of the head of an agent and ask what would it see if it looks to the right. And the crazy thing is, you know, initially when the agents are barely trained, the, these predictions are pretty bad. Over the time, they, they become better and better. You can still see that if you ask what happens when the head is turned by 360 degrees, for some time, they think that the different thing appears. And then at some stage, they understand actually that the same thing is supposed to appear. So they wow. get like a understanding of 3D structure. It's also, you know, very likely that they have inside some level of, of like a symbolic reasoning, like a, there are particularly symbols for other agents. So when you look at Dota uh, agents, they collaborate together and, uh, and uh, you know, they, 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 they have some anticipation of uh, if if they would win battle, they have some some expectations with respect to uh, other agents. I might be you know too much anthropomorphizing uh, the, the the how the things look 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 for me, but the the fact that they have a symbol for other agents uh, makes me believe that uh, at some stage, as the uh, you know as they are optimizing for skills, they would have also symbol to describe themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, this is like a very useful symbol to have. And this particularity, I would call it like a self-consciousness or self-awareness. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, still it might be different from the consciousness. So I guess the the way how I'm understanding the word consciousness, let's say the experience of drinking a coffee or let's say experience of being a butt, mm -hmm. uh, that's the meaning of the word consciousness. It doesn't mean to be awake. Uh, yeah, it feels, it might be also somewhat related to memory and recurrent connections. So. Um, it's kind of like if you look at anesthetic drugs, they might be uh, like a, they, they essentially they, they disturb uh, uh, brain waves mm -hmm. uh, such that the, mm, maybe memory is not not formed. Mm -hmm. and so there's a lessening of consciousness when you do that. Correct. And so that's one way to intuit what is consciousness. There's also kind of another element here. It could be that it's, you know, this kind of self-awareness module that you described, mm -hmm. plus the actual subjective experience 
is a storytelling module that tells us a story about uh, what we're experiencing. The crazy thing, so let's say, I mean, in meditation, they teach people not to speak story inside of the head. Mm -hmm. And there is also some fraction of population who doesn't have actually narrator. I know people who don't have a nar narrator and you know they have to use external people in order to uh, kind of solve tasks that require internal nar nar narrator. Uh, so it seems that it's possible to have the experience without the talk. What are we talking about when we talk about the internal narrator? So, is, that, is that the voice when you're like reading Yeah, I a thought book? That, that that's what you are referring to. Well, I was referring more on the, like, not an actual voice. I meant like, there's some kind of, like subjective experience feels like it's, it's fundamentally about storytelling to ourselves. It, it feels like, <laughs> Like the feeling is a story that is much, uh, much simpler abstraction than the raw sensory information. So there feels like it's a very high level abstraction that uh, is useful for me to feel like entity in this world. M most useful aspect of it is that because I'm conscious, I think there's an intricate connection to me not want, wanting to die. So like, it's a useful hack to really prioritize not dying. Like those seem to be somehow connected. So I'm telling this story of like, it's richly feels like something to be me. And the fact that me exists in this world, I want to preserve me. And so that makes it a useful agent hack. So I will just refer maybe to that first part, as you said, about the kind of story of describing who you are. Uh, I was uh, thinking about it even, so, you know, obviously I'm, I, I like thinking about consciousness. Uh, I like thinking about AI as well. And I'm trying to see analogies of these things in AI. What would it correspond to? So, uh, um, you know, open AI trained, uh, uh, a model called GPT, uh, which uh, can generate a uh, pretty amusing text on arbitrary topic. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, and one way to control GPT is uh, by putting into prefix at the beginning of the text some information, what would be the story about. Mm -hmm. uh, you can have even chat with uh, uh, you know, with GPT by saying that the chat is with Lex or Elon Musk or so, mm -hmm. and uh, GPT would just pretend to be you or Elon Musk or so. And uh, uh, it almost feels that this uh, story that we give ourselves to describe our life, it's almost like a things that you put into context of GPT. Yeah, to and prime. it generates the, and it's, but the, the context we provide to GPT is, uh, is multimodal. It's mo so GPT itself is multimodal. GPT itself uh, hasn't learned actually from experience of single human, but from the experience of humanity. It's a chameleon. You can turn it into anything, and in some sense, by providing context, uh, it, it, it you know behaves as the thing that you wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that the you know people have a stories of who they are, and uh, as you said, these stories they help them to operate in the world. Uh, but it's also, you know, interesting, I guess various people find it out through meditation or so that uh, there might be some patterns that you have learned when you were a kid that actually are not serving you anymore. And you also might be thinking that that's who you are and that's actually just a story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a useful hack, but sometimes it gets us into trouble. It's a local optima. It's a local optima.